Afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Tom Senior. I'm online editor at PC Gamer, and it's my pleasure to introduce Ted Timmins to talk to you about Sea of Thieves. Hello, everyone. I'll take a quick drink. So my name's Ted. I'm the PC design lead for Sea of Thieves, and some of you might be aware of Sea of Thieves, and some of you won't. So what I'll do is I'll take you for a very quick tour of, of what Sea of Thieves is, and then get into the good uh, PC side of everything. So. Um, excuse the PowerPoint's quality, uh, it's been a long week at work because we're only a month away from launch, um, but I've, I've tried my best to put something together and hopefully you will find it entertaining and have some good questions at the end as well. Um, so first of all, what is Sea of Thieves? Now it's quite simple, it's the pirate game you've always wanted. So the you part makes it very personal and a lot of the uh, topics that I talk about today will, will be kind of keep going back to this message about how we're trying to build a game for you and make it really personal. Um, when you think about pirates, you can't help but think about literature of old like Treasure Island and the sort of the romance of being a pirate, as well as things like The Goonies, for anyone who's seen that film in the 80s or grew up living, living the 80s dream. It's about you know four people going on an adventure, sharing stories, getting maps, exploring, basically being a kid. Um, and then you've got the, the more recent Pirates of the Caribbean, you know, the funny, witty, charming characters that, that lay within that. Then you've got Black Sails, the, the sort of the darker Netflix style, oh, I guess Amazon Prime style, uh, TV where it really shows a different side to pirates. And of course, uh, video games themselves like Monkey Island where it brings out that charm in the writing. And one that's very close to my heart is Wind Waker, the, the feeling of getting out on the ocean and just sailing for the horizon. So when you kind of think about all of these different works of art within uh, piracy, it's all kind of drip fed that um, into, into our own sort of take and, and input on what makes a pirate and what makes a pirate video game. But of course we want to bring our own flair into Sea of Thieves. So here's your, your crew right at the beginning of the game. Uh, so you have a crew of up to four. And then you head for the horizon, and when you encounter another ship, that's real people. That's one of the really magic moments in Sea of Thieves, is when you actually see a ship for the first time, and you know that those are real players playing at home. Um, now, how you interact with them is entirely up to you. You can go full blast with the cannon uh, and send them to Davy Jones, or you can use our pirate salute, which is how you make friends in Sea of Thieves. So literally, if I did a pirate salute to you, and you do a pirate salute back, the Xbox Live dialogue box pops up so you can actually make friends in game, which is pretty cool. Then once you're past the, the friend part, of course, shipwrecks are an absolute given uh, in, in anything piracy related, but you've got to watch out for the sharks. And then, of course, when you actually find the treasure, you then have to take it back to, in this case, the gold hoarders. So the way that our uh, progression system works is, a, is based around trading companies, each one offering a very different motivation. So you've got the gold hoarders, who are all about the riddles, the treasure, the, the treasure chests that are tangible and can be lost or stolen from you. And then you've got the Merchant Alliance, which is about gathering chickens, gathering uh, snakes, and, and just like really trying to uh, encapsulate that feeling of being a merchant on the high seas. And then finally, you've got the Order of Souls, which is very much about going on bounty quests, taking down skeleton crews, defeating captains, uh, taking those uh, skulls and cashing them back in for a reward. But enough with my rambling. I thought to summarize all of this, it would be good to watch a quick trailer, uh, which we released uh, at the end of last year. Assuming it plays, that is. So hopefully that gives a very quick glimpse if you haven't seen much of Sea of Thieves so far. But next up is, of course, the topic of this conversation, 
building a PC game that PC players expect. That's been our mantra for the last two years on the PC side, is really we got into a pattern and a cadence that Sea of Thieves isn't a port on either platform, that two years ago we made the process changes that we could build both platforms in complete parity to, to get us where we are today. Um, but of course, this is, this is Rare's first PC game. So if you're like me and you grew up playing Conker's Bad Fur Day, GoldenEye, Donkey Kong Country, as far as I'm concerned, they're some of the best games ever made. But if you've only ever owned a PC, then you never kind of experienced what, what Rare is capable of as a studio, that kind of British charm and, and wit that you expect. Um, so how did we get here? How do we go from being not a PC studio to being a PC studio? And one of the th things that you first have to do is think, what do PC players expect? You know, I think there's, there's often a little bit of a laugh and a joke about how expectations are, are high, and, uh, and th that's why we set the bar to, to match. Um, but one of the things we did last year was we did a Q&A with our community on the forums where we said, hey, send us your questions and, and we'll answer them. Now, the very first post had about 100 questions. Uh, so a good example of what do PC players expect is question after question after question, and it, it genuinely keeps going. Um, so that, that evening, we didn't actually get to answer all the questions, just given the, the sheer number of them. Um, but I said to my wife, sorry, I'm not great, really going to be able to see you tonight. I'm going to answer every single question. So you can see underneath, I've gone through and answered them all. But it's really important to us at Rare that we actually, uh, whenever someone comes to us in the community with a question, that we can give them that answer so that they can really feel confident that, that we're building the PC game that they want. And we won't get it always uh, right. And I think our community has been really understanding in that they've been playing for the last year now on, on PC, that they knew it was going to take some time to build that PC game they wanted. Um, and of course, yeah, when we see emotes, which are now in. So actually, tons of this stuff has already made it into the build. So it's great that on our run up to launch, we were able to, to meet player expectations. Um, we also spent a lot of time analyzing reviews. You can learn a lot from a review because if a video game gets a review of 87 uh, Metacritic uh, on a console and then it gets a review of 70 on the PC, clearly that was just a bad PC port. Um, and you tend, to, you tend to get the same kind of things mentioned a lot of the time, like the, the FPS is locked to bad frame rates, performance issues, low res, res assets. So we took all of these learnings and then made sure we built uh, Sea of Thieves it, with all of this stuff in mind as we go. So PC Gamer uh, also wrote this great article which we looked at. This is yeah, going back two years now, uh, but of course the article is a lot older which is stop making horrible console ports. And it's a guide for developers to follow on how to make a good PC game. Um, so accessible settings, we have them in Sea of Thieves. Resolution, yes, you can change your resolution in Sea of Thieves. Yes, you can alt-tab, and I will say, we've probably got a little bit of work to do here because every now and again, you'll alt-tab and you'll get disconnected from the server. But the, for the majority of our players, alt-tab's proving to be no problem at all. Uh, key bindings, not only did we do them for the keyboard, we've done them for the controller as well because that goes back to my point about parity, that whenever we build something, we always make sure that we do it for the other platform or the other input device as well. So you can rebind every single key uh, on keyboard and you can rebind every single control on the controller. Uh, frame rate, yep, unlocked, 120, whatever you want, you can, you can have it, even all the way down to 15 FPS if you're playing on a low-end device, it's entirely up to you. Uh, field of view, again, not only did we put it in on the PC version, we put it in on the Xbox version because we couldn't think of a reason not to. So uh, if you're an Xbox player in the room, you're still welcome to change your field of view. Uh, DRM, yep, it's, it's basically grab it from the Windows and store and, and away you go. So no, no overarching DRM there. Menus, yep, all fully mouse compatible, as you'd expect, uh, all designed very much with PC and uh, keyboard and controller in mind. Mouse support, again, Use the mouse. <laughs> it's a PC game. It's totally fine. Uh, but game pads, likewise, if you've got a controller, absolutely plug it in. All the icons will change. If, if funnily enough, if you actually tap the keyboard, the icons would change. If you tap the controller, the icons would change. It's completely hot swap, depending on how you want to play. High res textures, yes, absolutely, up to 4K at the moment. Uh, we're actually working on the Xbox One X version for launch now as well. So if you've got an Xbox One X, that you can take advantage of a full 4K texture pack. And post-release patches, if anyone's watched any of our sort of behind the scenes videos, we're really talking about Sea of Thieves lasting many, many years. So yeah, uh, if you want uh, release, release patches, post-release patches, uh, we're exactly the game for you. And I think we're on our 150th update. 
uh, something to that effect. And we're not even out yet. So that shows the intent as to how we plan to build Sea of Thieves going forward. And social media integration. Uh, I think this was from a time where it was a bit more popular to do so. But yeah, we have no social media integration. Although we did laugh about our Tinder at one point. But uh, maybe I should keep that as an internal joke uh, only. Um, so we also visited Coalition. Um, anyone in here who's familiar with Gears of War, it's definitely one of my favorite games. Uh, and what they did was they broke the mold. Not only did they release a very successful game on console, the Metacritic was better on PC. So we thought, well, okay, they've raised the bar now. Like if PC player expectations weren't high enough already, we've now got to, to beat that. Um, so we, we flew over to Vancouver, I think it was last year, uh, spent a week with them. Uh, and we also went to the Minecraft team as well, because of course that is a massively successful title uh, on PC. And we visited 343 because they released Forge uh, to their community and we wanted to understand how, how they worked. Um, and finally we went to visit Turn 10, a uh, fancy car in the lobby of course, only worth a few million dollars. And uh, had one of our, our play sessions with them. Uh, so this would have been a very early build for, for us, this is about 18 months ago. And yeah, it just shows the flexibility that you've essentially got a crew of four sat around a table playing Sea of Thieves. I think it's just a really nice example as to the, the kind of feel we're trying to do with this game. Um, and another one of our mission statements was get Sea of Thieves running on a potato. Uh, so for anyone who's not aware, it's a bit of, a, bit of an in-joke um, that really if, if your PC is so rubbish, it's a potato. Uh, so I don't know what that PC was running at the time, but it's got all the necessary parts. Um, but there's a bit of a serious message behind that in that not every player has a 4K beast of a rig. Um, there are actually a lot of players with tablets or, or low-end laptops, or maybe it's a young kid who got a cheap PC for Christmas. Um, we wanted to make sure that we could tailor a video game to them just as much as we do uh, the high end. To, to go back to that pirate game for everyone, we need to really build and really think about how we deliver that. So on the left there is a Surface Pro 4. The fan is important. Uh, it adds a few extra frames a second. <laughs> Not bad for five pounds. And, uh, and on the right, you have uh, the, the newer Surface Book with the 2160p uh, resolution. So those are like the, the, the before and after, or the, the potato and the, and the high-end rig. That was really important to us, that we cover that entire range uh, of computers. Uh, and then we, in our war room, which is the name of one of our meetings, uh, we built some compatibility labs. So there's 20 PCs in this room. But not only that, we also wanted to make sure that we have all the monitor coverage. So I, I dug out a monitor from the 90s. We had to buy it off of eBay, but we saw that there were p people in our community still using it, so we figured we should make sure that works. Then we got uh, a 21 by 9 Predator uh, monitor. I actually like this so much I bought one <laughs> myself, and I think quite a few people in the office have as well. Um, because we saw repeatedly in reviews people complaining that 21 by 9 wasn't supported, and yet they had a $1,000 monitor. So we figured, you know, players who have invested that amount of money, we need to make sure they, they get supported. Um, and AMD sent this monitor over to us uh, a few weeks ago, which I took ownership of because someone's got to test it, right? And um, it looks amazing, uh, as, as you would expect, you know, just to make sure that for all these different ranges of monitors, it, the game just works. Uh, and that's a screenshot I took uh, myself. So Shield, you're probably wondering, what the hell is Shield? Um, one of the benefits of being a first-party developer at Microsoft is, of course, you've got all the, the breadth of Microsoft resource available to you. And there's actually an internal team called Shield. And they have 250 different PCs. So when you think about it, we started with our 20. And once we made sure that the game was really stable on those 20, we still need more testing before we feel comfortable to go to real players. So these, this is about uh, just over a year ago, I think, maybe about 14 months ago. Uh, there's Mimi. She runs the team. And again, we flew out to Redmond just to spend some time with them and, and really understand their work process. So all day long, they would stress test Sea of Thieves on many different devices and then send us frame rate reports on how, it, how the game performed. So uh, alongside all this, of course, we're working with NVIDIA, we're working with AMD, we're working with Intel. We're just making sure that we're getting as much learning and coverage as possible. So whenever we found, for example, I think an old AMD Phenom process and refused to run the game, it was like, oh, cool, okay, if it refuses to run the game, we should fix that. And then within a few weeks, we turn around the fix and it goes into the build. But of course, once you've had 250 PCs, the next step is actually going to real players and really starting to understand what kind of devices do, do, do our community and uh, player base have. So we thought a good way to do that initially would be to survey them. So uh, if anyone in here took part in our survey, thank you very much, because it really helped uh, define the vision from that point on. But what was great was we could actually go to our community and say, what's important to you when it comes to PC features? Like, wh when you talk about PC gaming, I'm sure everyone has 
has different things. Like, I prefer frame rate to resolution. Some people prefer resolution to frame rate. That's just like one example of one of the diverse uh, opinions. But uh, Joe Chisholm, who runs our Xbox research team out in Redmond, he put together this great um, survey. We actually went to our community just to understand if you're a Sea of Thieves player on PC, why are you, um, or kind of what drew you to the game? Um, so this goes back to monitor refresh rates. As you can see, 60 hertz is pretty popular. But you have a lot of people at the 144 hertz mark, and that's actually gone up since we did this survey. Uh, what we actually found was we had more issues with high frame rates than we did low frame rates. Uh, on our machine that had 240 frames a second, you couldn't play it because it was too fast for the mouse to even, even have an input. So things like that that you wouldn't expect that we helped flush out um, through our testing phase. And of course, all the different resolutions. Um, are you using Windows 10 on your gaming laptop? Yeah, it turned out a lot of our community was using Windows 10. Um, why play on PC? So, of course, you've got the more obvious performance graphics, but shout out to the 9% who actively dislike console gaming. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I personally, I'm just a gamer. I, I game on anything, but uh, yeah, I like that you know, some people are resolute to their, to their hardware. And of course, do you play mouse and keyboard controller or both? So again, a real flexibility there in how our players play. We actually consider ourselves to be a, a sandbox game more so than a first-person shooter. If you've seen any of our videos, the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay is very much around the ship and being a part of a crew. When you encounter someone, of course, it is, it is a first-person shooter. But we like to think of it as more as a first-person adventure game. So again, that's where we see that we need to make sure we've got a really good controller and keyboard and mouse support. Um, do you invert your y-axis? So on the vertical side, yes, a lot of people did. And there's actually 4% of people who invert the x-axis. Uh, it makes me feel sick. I, I cannot do it. It's, it's, uh, it seems odd to me. But there was that 4% that we, we went, OK, well, there's 4% of our player base who are going to invert the horizontal. We need to add that. So that's now a feature in the game for those 4% who uh, I don't know how they play without being sick. But uh, we'll leave it there. And then the most important features for PC gamers, this was probably the most important slide out of the entire survey, um, because of course it really detailed to, to us as developers uh, in what order we should develop features. And some are quite obvious. I think everyone knows that you're a PC gamer, you come to a PC game, and you expect detailed video settings, which we have now in Sea of Thieves. Um, but over the, the course of the year, we've built things in this order. We literally went to our community and we said, thank you for this survey. We're now going to add features in the exact order that, you, that you've requested. And I'm really happy to say we've delivered everything. The only thing we haven't delivered is um, multi-GPU. But just because the percentage of our players is so small with multi-GPUs, that the game will work and it will run absolutely fine. We're just not taking advantage of the second card. But everything else above that, field of view, in-game text chat, customizable keyboard mappings, that's all in. And it's great that we've been able to meet that expectation. Then you, you might be familiar with this, DirectX DX Diag. Uh, um, it allows us as developers to understand the detail of your machine. Now, we have some very clever telemetry uh, going through SPIs and services, et cetera, et cetera, so we understand uh, your device when you play Sea of Thieves. But before we reached that point, before we had PC players, we wanted to understand our community. So we went to uh, the community in this survey and said, please upload your DX Diag, and we'll use that information to understand where we need to focus our time. Now, we had a little bit of a sweepstake in the studio. I, I bet that 500 uh, surveys or, or DX Diags would be submitted. Uh, my boss, Joe, he was like, oh, no, no, we'll definitely hit 1,000. We had 18,714 DX Diags um, sent to us. It actually crashed our website, uh, such was the demand. So it was great that at this stage, when we'd been to various different games, comms, and E3s, all with Xbox, that we'd organically had this PC community come and join us because they'd seen the game and gone, oh, that really appeals to me as a PC gamer. So we took that 18,714 and kind of painted this picture. One of the interesting things was actually when it came to the languages, um, Russian was our third biggest, uh, no, fourth biggest language. So again, we weren't, at the time, we weren't planning to deliver uh, Russian uh, localization for launch. But when we saw that, we were like, we absolutely need to deliver Russian for launch, which we have. And it was great watching uh, people playing last night in Russian. So it, it's, it's really 
guided how we build this game, knowing who is playing it and who wants to play it has allowed us to build it in such a way. Um, and then more uncommon languages. Uh, you know, when you, when you think about um, video games, it's often a bit of a reality shock when you, you, know, you want to appeal to everyone, but when, when you see that you've got 45 different languages playing your game, that for a developer, that's a really humbling uh, experience. So of course, at this point, we've learned loads, and we've gone to our community, and we, and we took those DX Diags, and we invited 1,000 players. And what we did was, in that set of 18,000 DX Diags, we had the super low-end potato, and then we had, there was one guy who had 132 gig of RAM. Like, who needs 132 gig of RAM? I'm sure they have a reason. Um, but we made sure that, that that 1,000 players transcended the entire spectrum. And from that, we got tons of learnings. And one of the interesting things that came out of that was, oh, Sea of Thieves haven't even mentioned push to talk. And we're like, oh, yeah, we haven't even talked about push to talk yet, uh, which for anyone who, who isn't aware, you can basically just hold a key to open your mic channel and then release it to close it again. Now, I tend to play with an open mic and a mute button. So it wasn't with, with bad intentions that it wasn't in the survey. It was just very much a personal play style. So we thought, well, actually, as the community is a little bit upset by the fact that we haven't even talked about push to talk, we should do it. So we dropped everything we were working on at the time, and we delivered push to talk in our very next uh, technical alpha, as well as increasing that audience. Because as a, as a first time PC studio, we know that we have to work that extra bit harder. You know, if it's Bioware or Bethesda, um, everyone knows they're going to make a great PC game. Uh, whereas when it comes to Rare, who have only ever made N64 games and, and Xbox games, it does make you go, right, we've got to work for this audience. Um, and at the same time, we did ultra wide monitor mouse sensitivity, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, um, as well as arrow key support, which I will talk about a little bit more in a second. So auto detect tests. At the time, we actually weren't in a position where we could turn on resolution settings. And I was very worried because, as you know, as a PC player, you expect to be able to change your resolution. So I just thought, how can we be really honest with our community and say, we're not ready to turn on video settings yet, but at the same time, we're going to learn so much just from knowing how your game is auto-detected. So in that auto-detect test, it was great for us because we knew no one could change their settings, that they were playing with what we certified as rare, the best settings for your PC. And we got so many learnings out of that that people messaged us going, like, it's unplayable, like, you picked the wrong settings. And we'd look at the data and then go, oh, yeah, this, this PC spec is in the wrong bucket, and we change things around. And then again, we'd go back to NVIDIA, AMD, and Intel and say, can you advise us on you know, which devices should be in which bucket. So it actually really helped us build up this, you know, when you think of playing games on a console, you, you kind of put the disc in the tray and away you go. It's nice to think that these auto-detect tests help create that sense on a PC as well, where when we auto-detect your device, you can just be away uh, and play the game. And of course, yep, this just covers some of the above as well, just about how we did push to talk. And finally, unofficially dubbed the Lizard LaRue method. Um, we, at the time, we didn't have keyboard bindings, but there was a group within our community who played with arrow keys. So we thought, like, what can we do if we don't, it's still about six months until we're gonna be able to implement keyboard rebindings. So what we did was we did a whole second uh, binding system, just so that um, uh, the minority, but a very important minority to us, could play uh, with arrow keys. Uh, so here's the Liza LaRue method. And, uh, and yeah, she got back to us and was like, thank you so much for giving uh, uh, us cat handed players uh, a little extra help. So that's the kind of rapport we have with our community and, and that drives us to make the game better. Now onto crossplay. Uh, we call it no asterisk crossplay. And the reason being is there's a lot of games that offer crossplay, but when you read the small print, it says uh, no ranked play, social only, only with friends. There always seems to be like a ton of exceptions behind the rule. Whereas for us, we just wanted to say it's crossplay. And of course, one of the things that comes with that, <laughs> honest, yeah. Uh, one of the things that comes with that is the question around balancing. How can we balance the game so that PC players can play with Xbox players and vice versa? And we did a lot of research into this. At this stage in time, we had a PC technical alpha, and we had an Xbox technical alpha. We basically built this giant wall in our services. Um, but of course, at one point, we always wanted to bring that wall down and let players play together. So what we did was we looked at uh, gun combat. And at the time, it was very much um, hit scan, kind of you, you, fire a, you fire a bullet and it hits someone straight away. And we thought, is that even ripe for a pirate game? That it, it's like firing lasers in, in like a, 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 or feels like firing a bullet in Call of Duty. 
So we re revisited the whole system and actually made it that when you fire a bullet, you see the arc, and it's, it's an actual real projectile that you see uh, trace of fire through the air. And that made it a lot more about timing rather than accuracy and skill. And that went down really, really well with our community. So it enabled us to really um, balance the, the uh, I guess, the... Um, the world so that anyone with any device can play and still have a level playing field. Because when you think about it, if you saw that video uh, earlier on, most of the combat was around ship versus ship. Uh, and there's, there's no advantage uh, either on PC or on Xbox at that point. And I really like this quote. I actually uh, saw it in the, uh, the, the Kraken leak, if anyone noticed that last week. Um, and someone uh, down the depths of 4chan uh, said, I mostly want this game because I live 15 hours away from my younger brother, and it's the only game besides Minecraft and Rocket League that support crossplay. He plays on Xbox One, I play on PC. It will be nice to play video games with him again. I just thought that was really, really sweet. And that explains, you know, it's a really good validation for us as to why we just want you to play. If you've got a friend on a different platform or a brother, or, or, or a sister or anything, um, that for us just to enable you to play how you want to play. And then after all of this, of course, we then look at the, the end result of the survey. So at this moment in time, or at that moment in time, 6% uh, of our community were very dissatisfied. There were frame rate drops, lag, stuttering, etc., etc. So what we did was we did a huge pass on everything and again worked very closely with our hardware partners. And now, or I think this is actually, even this is about three months old, um, it's down to 0.8%. And that's something we just keep pushing on, that we just want to make sure that that very satisfied just keeps growing and growing and growing, because that, that indicates to us that we are meeting our goal of delivering the PC game that PC players expect. And where are we improving? I think this is a really important one to talk about, because we do have a very honest conversation with our community. We, we know that we can improve, and we know there are things we could do better. Um, but we wanted to go back to them and say, hey, still, we've done all the stuff you said in the first pass. What's the next level of things you want, you want us to do? So this is what we're going to be working on in the future. Um, the ability to assign radial items to hotkeys was clearly like the, the most important thing, uh, which has actually gone into the build. So anyone who plays this weekend will experience hotkeys for the first time. Uh, swimming is a bit of a bigger job for us, which we're going to revisit post-launch. Um, but then you go all the way through, and there's a whole bunch in there that we've already done, um, even down to the point where text chat on a control pad. So that's on our roadmap at some point in the future that if you're playing on Xbox, you can still use text chat to chat to people on PC or, or on a console as well. Our crash rate was 0.6% during closed beta, which is really, really low for a closed beta. Again, we can improve, and we have, and that's a number that keeps going down. So we're constantly weeding out uh, crashes in the game just to make sure that the game is really stable and performs well. And we're communicating with our audience as much as ever. I'm here. Uh, and of course, we, we always do our weekly updates. We're always in the forums. We're always communicating. That, to us, is our, is our real strength as a studio and just making sure that it's not just a one-way uh, transmission. It's that we listen to the community, we action it, and we, and we make our game better for them. And launch is just the beginning. We have a roadmap full of content uh, and new features planned for after launch. Some have already been leaked or data mined, so thank you for that, whoever data mined our, our code. Um, but we've got a lot in, in stock uh, in, for surprise as well that wasn't leaked, which is good. And then when it came to the PC specs, we wanted to approach it slightly differently. We, I guess as a first time PC studio, you get an opportunity to go, why do we only ever talk about min recommended and Mac like ultra spec? What does that even mean to anyone? But what if we broke uh, each category down into a resolution and expected frame rate? That actually gives players uh, an idea as to the performance they, they can expect. <laughs> oh, murderous pursuits, anyone? I won't be delivering that, I promise. And uh, yeah, so you can see here, it goes all the way from 540p, which is really officially below our min spec, all the way up to the 4K 60 FPS extremes. So we wanted to make sure that whatever device you have or own, you can look at this chart and very quickly know what experience you're going to get. Now, I want to talk a little bit more about the uh, community aspect and how we've worked with them and how we work with them going forward. We went to our community and we said, we'd like a pirate code in the game, but we want you to make it up. You tell us what the pirate code should contain. So this is it. The, the, the sea calls to us all. The sea unites us as one community. Disputes are settled upon the waves. All crewmates are equal. The crew bond is sacred. Respect new pirates and their voyage ahead. And those who cheat shall be punished. And 
when, when the community created that, that was a really nice thing for us, that it came from them. And then it's up to us as developers to make sure that we surface that in-game. So literally hot off the press uh, yesterday, so not even in the game yet, is that you can now, in the tavern, access the pirate code. And you can read it through article by article. And at the end, you have to agree to it. <laughs> so, so the moment you, you interact, uh, at the end of it, you'll come out and agree to the code. It's all part of us trying to make like, the most friendly and fun multiplayer game that we know that there is, is going to be a challenge around toxicity. And we want to try really, really hard to make sure that we're just a fun, welcoming game. Here's an idea I got while watching uh, Summit playing. Uh, if anyone's seen him lately, he's been putting in a number of hours into uh, Sea of Thieves on Twitch. And uh, him and his crew were laughing that you can basically show each other maps. Um, and we thought it'd be a really fun idea that you could actually have the pirate code in your inventory. And if someone's rude to you, you could literally show them the pirate code uh, and, and tell them where they're going wrong. So that's something we want to implement a little bit further down the line. But again, it really it feels like a rare thing. It feels very tonal, and it feels really fitting to the game. Uh, and I wanted to pull out just one thing. Um, if anyone's watched the New York Comic Con panel, and if you haven't, I, I really suggest you go do it uh, or go watch it. Um, Mike and Joe did a great um, panel with Shelley just about how we've really taken uh, community feedback and, and put it into the game, but also taking our community members themselves and immortalizing them in the game. So here's just one example of, uh, of a chap called Clumsy George on our forums. Uh, he came to see a Thieves, uh, I guess as maybe a bit of an outsider of other gaming communities, and immediately he felt very at home. And he, he, he famously once said that uh, he, he might not be the best pirate in the world, but he could scrub a deck better than anyone else. So we called it the George and the Kraken, and there it is holding a brush. Um, so we, we've done this all around the world, uh, and we're seeing, I actually saw a player playing yesterday, and he saw Griffin McElroy from Polygon's um, immortalization in game where it's a skeleton eating a banana for anyone who missed the meme at E3 last year. Um, but we, we're constantly taking things from our community and actually putting it in game to immortalize them. And with that comes the achievements. So we did a design and achievement competition. Some of you may have already seen this. We had 2,300 entries, which was a very, very late night for me, uh, sifting through all of them. And special thanks to the person, I think it was along the lines of jump across a puddle uh, ju by jumping on five crocodiles' heads. And we don't have crocodiles and we don't have puddles. But other than that, great idea. Um, so we, took, we went through all these 2,300 achievements and then we, p and then we went back to the community uh, with a top five and they picked the winner, uh, which was Smile You Son of a, uh, which is uh, a quote from Jaws and it's for killing a shark with an explosive barrel. And we're going to roll that into the game after launch uh, and send them uh, a signed piece of artwork as well. But once we'd done the design achievement contest, we then went back to our community again and said, what if the riddles, uh, sorry, what if the achievements were written as riddles? So again, very tonal, feels like it's, it's more of a part of the world. So we've, been, we've gone through the whole list of all of our achievements, which I think we'll be announcing very shortly, and they're all done in riddles. So of course, if you're a, if you're a real, um, uh, achievement hunter, you can just go online and find out what it means. But if you're a real Sea of Thieves fan, really living the pirate life, you can try and resolve the riddle yourself to understand uh, how you unlock uh, the relevant achievement. So a little bit of a plug, but it's for very good reason. So for anyone who's got access to Sea of Thieves now, or anyone who's pre-ordered the game, you can take part in our scale test, which is literally live right now. Um, and this is all helping us to really understand um, how many players are playing at any one time, for us to make sure that our services can cope under the load because we struggled a little bit during closed beta. So for anyone who was effect affected with that, thank you very much for your patience. Um, and we really want to understand the, the sense of scale because of course when you're building a game uh, with this many players playing at once, uh, we, we want to make sure that the, um, the services can cope. And of course, this is the closed beta summary. Uh, so you can see at one stage, we had over 35,000 players at the same time playing Sea of Thieves. And I think yesterday that went up um, even higher. And actually what we found in the current uh, scale test is for the first time we hit 50% of players were on PC. Uh, and during the closed beta, it was about 30 to 35%. So it's amazing that we're just getting more and more PC players coming in and you know, they're seeing the support, they're seeing all the features that we're putting in that they expect. And then they're coming in to, to join and play with the game. And it's great as well that we just track all these stats. You know, Almost a billion gold uh, was uh, pillaged and plundered uh, during our closed beta. So we can do really fun stuff with our community around these stats as well. 
and I'm just going to put this in, I hope, I hope you guys don't mind, but I think it's really important as well just to call out that developers are good people. Uh, I think at this stage in a project, the whole team's working really, really hard. We've got a great team and everyone's super passionate to make the best game we can. Um, and really, I just wanted to sh show you some faces, I think, because I think it's nice when you get to see the dev team and understand the people behind it. Um, so we have a summer party uh, every, every year, like most companies. Um, we do behind-the-scenes videos for our team. So there's Andy, Sarah, and John. Uh, I think that was to talk about skeleton AI. So if you haven't seen any of our videos, I definitely recommend you check them out. Um, we do podcasts with dogs and men with beards. Uh, so that's JT, one of our lead engineers, super talented guy, um, and, and you really get an opportunity to understand you know, what makes these developers tick and why do we make the decisions we make uh, to make the best game we can for you. Um, and we raise money for our local charities as well. So Special Effect live um, only probably about an hour away from us. They came to visit the studio, and we wanted to make sure that when Sea of Thieves comes out, we really have a lot of accessibility options uh, for players who may have a disability or, or may have a particular requirement. And that really guided some of our decision-making around uh, controller configs, speech-to-text, text-to-speech. And again, we have a roadmap uh, even beyond launch around how many more features we want to roll in. Um, and yet again, we have a really cool dog uh, <laughs> called Captain Kato. Uh, Josh is the, the dad of this dog, and he comes on a Thursday and a Friday, which is good fun. Um, so again, a little call to action. If you've, always want, if you've ever wanted to work in video games, Rare is a really, really cool place to work. Um, we have a whole bunch of open jobs, so if you fancy setting sail with us and coming on a bit of a journey, please do, please do apply and seek it out. Um, and that's it. <laughs>